it's got a late start with the uh, updated Inside Star Citizen. Um, of course, it was running late getting released as well, but also between that and work, we didn't get a chance to react or anything to it or even kind of review it. So we'll go ahead and jump in and see what we've got this week. Cargo sits at the very heart of the non-combat Star Citizen experience. And as it continues to evolve in the upcoming Alpha 323 and beyond, its next major evolution is less about the places you'll go and more about the ones you'll start and come back to. Now, hangars, whether they're persistent, instanced, personal, or staging, make up the next frontier of cargo gameplay. And we went to Chad and his team for an early look at where they're going and how they're progressing. Definitely can't wait for the like the persistent hangar, especially if just being able to make everything your own place. It's going to be really, really cool, I think. Um, especially if it kind of leads into like player housing, not necessarily the base building, but if, say, you uh, are in New Babbage, you can actually get an apartment or something somewhere. I think it'd be really, really cool as well. I know they were working on some interiors at uh, some point and just hope to see more of that in the future as well. Let's find out more. So, yeah, we've had a couple ISCs before to talk about the new cargo and hangars features coming. But now that we're here and about to release things, we want to talk a bit about how that impacts your play experience, even if you don't care at all about cargo. That's a lot of suits. Get a whole terracotta army there. So let's start with persistent hangers. What are they and what does that mean? So a persistent hanger is an instance hanger that is going to be assigned to you whenever you select your home location when logging into the game for the first time for a patch. When that happens, what we do is we determine the largest ship that you have and then entitle to you a persistent hanger that's of the size needed to facilitate that ship. So that makes me wonder because right now, of course, I have, I think the Carrick is the largest ship that I currently have. It's not the largest one that I own. I have the Polaris, but is it going to be stuck at the Carrick size? Is it going to be able to, to accommodate the Polaris? I, I wonder if that's going to try to change anything there as well. Whenever you go into that hangar into the game, that hangar at your home location is always your hangar and you'll be able to use it like your home. You'll be able to keep things in the hangar. You'll be able to leave things around. You can invite friends in. You can treat it like your own little oasis. So let's talk about for these personal hangars, how do you actually get into them? You can make a request via ATC for landing. And when we do that, we'll check to see if you have any personal hangers entitled to you, you'll be able to enter in using largely the same methodology that you do now, land, and then you can just hang out in there. As far as what can you actually do with your personal hanger and what kinds of things can you decorate with it, what we're gonna do is allow you to call anything in your inventory up via that freight elevator. You can been, pick it up off the freight. There's been some dogs that have actually been mentioned in lease and stuff about being able to get, I wonder if you can get those in companion and can join you in your hangar as well. Freight elevator, either with your hands or using the tractor beam and just screw it about your location, however you pick. Also in the hangars, you'll notice several new kiosks. We have the freight elevator kiosk, which has a brand new a uh, UI and uh, inventory system to deal with uh, large volumes of cargo. You're going to have on the left hand side a section that is showing the contents of the platform itself. And on the right hand side, similar inventory layout with all your armor and weapons and items. And then you decide what you want to spawn in, um, in the freight elevator. The freight elevator then comes up and then you can start doing like loading and unloading of various cargo into your ship and so on. If you're considerate about how you're loading things and you're trying to optimize your loading times, it'll give you a lot of power as far as, for example, making sure that certain kinds of things are front loaded on the platform to make your multi-crew loading as streamlined as possible. And 
and that also brings up where you can actually select it. Whenever you do your inventory, is that going to automatically be put over in the boxes? Is it going to just be laying there in its own random box? Um, I haven't messed with a lot of that yet, but I mean, I definitely am kind of curious on that part just to see if, I mean, who knows how it's going to go there. Anything that's in your inventory, you're going to be able to call up. Some things you might have to put into an inventory container box. We're talking 8, 16, 24, even 32 SU size container boxes that you can put large items in. Now you can raise that up on the platform, including in collections, transfer that very quickly onto your ship, and then take them to another location. In your personal hangar, you'll also have access to several other kiosks, starting with the item bank. Which are another form of kiosk, which you could almost consider like a small freight elevator in a way, in that you can retrieve... That's also kind of gotten a little bit... Not sure if it's really a delay on it or what exactly is going on, um, but there's been some updates and stuff on that as well, and we'll hopefully know more on that here soon. Personal items, such as clothing, armor, and weapons, because the item that's being delivered will be delivered in a tray that's in the same machine. So you interact that kind of like you interact with a loot box and you get that out. So no other player can actually physically get anything from your local inventory. And uh, these item banks can be found not just within the hangars, but also the wider locations such as your hubs and other key areas of a location to retrieve um, your personal items. Since you can't interact with, the, with your inventory anymore at any given time, it means like we need to have enough item banks around each location so you don't block each other um, from accessing an, an, a terminal, right? It's just a quicker way to get a quick gun or a few. Now I'm still waiting to see if they actually add an additional terminal or something that a new deal because there's been too many times I've ran up on that and just somebody standing there AFK or something and you have no way to access it. I mean, even if it's just to add additional terminals or do some way like the the personal shopping that has been mentioned on uh, the 323 uh Ivacati patch notes and stuff that I, they had if they at least give you like an option to do some kind of a shopping within that to buy the ships maybe you have to go to that location to pick it up but at least be able to do that so you don't have to wait on all these terminals and stuff because the ones at New Deal, especially if somebody just gets there and goes AFK and they're doing some kind of a mouse thing or something to stop you from being able to access it, but they're going to stand there the whole time. It, it's just overly annoying. And I know there's a lot of trolls that'll do that every now and then, but it's still, it, that, that definitely needs to be looked at. Your meta pins or your armor without having to load it up from the freight elevator. And the last kiosk that I want to talk about is the ASOP terminal. Which we have positioned in the hangar, so you can request your ships from within the hangar and not just the spaceport. So they will still remain in the spaceport. So if you don't have a personal hangar in your location, you can request your ship also from there. What we're doing is we're changing the way that the ships spawn in the game. You can now request your ships from within the hangar and they will appear to you but they won't just come out of thin air. What happens is the whole of the floor will open up. You get this like amazing view of the, of the hangar, the lights dim, the doors open. And the landing platform will be rising up towards you and your ship will be there. We try to balance it in a way that it doesn't take too much time for you, but also that it feels like it has the right weight to it, but also you don't have to wait for it too long. So now you have a seamless transition and a realistic way of storing your ships away. Additionally, you can do clever things like call up a smaller vehicle, such as a ground vehicle, drive it off, and then call up a larger vehicle. Then you'll have access to your ground vehicles without having to go to another location. Is that going to take place of where they were having the, uh, the smaller vehicles and stuff in the freight elevator itself, or is this how it's going to be intended to be used. You'll be able to call up multiple ships and maybe have one person fly off with one ship, call another one, have another person in your party fly up with another ship. Or you can just call up a ship, change your mind, and then call up a different ship without having to leave or anything like that. It gives you a lot of flexibility. And I can already tell what some of you are thinking right now. 
We're not going to let the system like eat your body and store it into the inventory or anything like that. Uh, we'll make sure to account for that such that if there's a blocking change that happens, we'll stop. I foresee that happening quite a bit, especially with me because I don't pay attention half the time. The process, go back up to the default state and then tell the player about the issue so that they can account for it. If you do want to jump into the platform just before it closes and fall to your death, you can fall to your death if you want to. <laughs> so this is really cool and we're really happy to get this in. It's been discussed for some years now and it's been a very tricky thing to fit in and certain techs required to be able to do it. You'd be able to have this hangar in your own space and, and call your own ships and do a lot more within the hangar now. Now that we're adding all of this new facility to the hangars in the game, allowing them to be persistent, adding these freight elevators, adding the ship platform, there's a lot of more things that we have to have in these hangars for them to be useful for what we're adding. So the hangar sizes um, had to increase um, quite a bit. We did not want to do that originally in the beginning, but uh, soon when we did prototyping, we figured out that not all, not all the hangars, as I said, like the low-tech hangars in particular, are quite old by this point. Not all of them were to the same standards or metrics. So we figured that with the landing pad now going down, you had this gap for like quite some time before the um, before the doors close. So there was a very narrow walkway for the player sometimes. So we had to rejig some things and made it actually larger. So the um, large and XL have had significant size changes. So the XL is about 20% larger and the large is about 30% larger. So certain ships that were a little tight can now fit a lot more easily. So you don't feel like your wings almost scratch the walls of it. So it feels a bit more natural and, and better to the play experience to land in your hangar now. The medium is the same, but taller. And the small has not been changed, but we re have classified ships to fit into the medium that were once classified as small. So hopefully a much better player experience than there has been before. And it's been interesting to take uh, the design of a elevator and the door uh, and extrapolate that across multiple sizes. So in some cases you can kind of widen out the door and use the same shapes. And in some cases you need to think really about how those shapes work. And sometimes they don't work within a small door, for example, when it did work in a much wider door. So we've had to play around with that and keep them looking consistent with each other, but also uh, adapt those shapes to work for each size. So this is an actualization of a long-term goal for this entire cargo career, to make the whole thing feel more real. It means that the whole experience is gonna allow for manual loading. It'll also feel more rewarding because it'll give you more interesting choices to make throughout the process. It'll make multi-crewing a more interesting and useful experience. It's going to just make the whole experience a more skill intensive and interesting and uh, tactile. Another thing that we've talked about is automated loading in the games. This allows you to still do commodity trading without needing to actually move the boxes yourself. It will be an option in the commodity terminal. Whenever you go and you pick the destination inventory, you'll be confronted with several options. One is the location inventory. The next will be all your ships that are at the location. If you choose a ship, you'll have the option to have it be automatically unloaded or loaded for you, of course, with an added cost. The ship has to be stored to allow for the transfer, and it will be time-locked while that transfer is occurring. They always do kind of make me wonder, because I know, with especially something like the Carrick itself, and well, really, the caterpillar is not the easiest one to do it with. But with the carry, you're not going to get some of those larger containers through those doors. It's just not going to happen, or at least not going to happen gracefully. And being able to actually store it and then have someone else load it for you, um, in AI in this particular case, definitely will make that still a very, very usable ship and hopefully be able to do that with a lot more if not all the ships just to make it easier on some people maybe they want to call up a ship get it loaded with stuff 
run around do a few things while they're waiting on it to get loaded and then finally go ahead and once it's ready just jump in it and go and call it back up different locations in the game will have different amounts of time places that are more optimized for trade are going to allow for faster transfer you'll be able to still do the trading you just have to wait a little bit and pay a bit more money so your profits won't be quite as good in that case once the automatic loading process is finished you can just go to the asop terminal in the hangar access it raise it and go off and you're on your way what if, you can do if you care about cargo this is going to be transformational but even if you're not interested in cargo at all. It's still a foundational change for the game that fundamentally changes principles about inventory, physicality, and your play experience. The work's ongoing. We're nearly there. I think the team's done a great job on this. It's been tricky to get it working as it should be. It's a big milestone for the game that's been years in the making and coming. While I'm here to talk about it today, there's been a large number of teams across the entire company that have helped. Everybody from art, animation, VFX, through to all of the gameplay teams, engine teams. We've had a huge effort from Austin, Montreal, Los Angeles, Frankfurt, Manchester. It's been a big endeavor. So I want to thank everyone that's been helping to see this vision through. And I'm really looking forward to getting this into your hands so that you can play with it. I can't believe let's peek over hat. That's rude. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that the days of big ships scraping by the edges of player hangers are almost behind us. That you'll soon be able to spawn your ships and have them rise up directly into these newly expanded hangers. And that the freight elevators and item banks within will herald a new future of physicalized cargo loading that should have long-reaching ramifications for life in the verse. And of course, while everything you see on ISC is always an early work in progress, because of the dramatic and far-reaching effects these systems will have on all life in the verse, you can expect this work will continue to iterate and evolve from what you've just seen between now and its upcoming targeted release in Alpha 323. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Thanks for letting us share the process of game development with you, and we'll see you all here next week. I'll let it finish up, and it will kind of go through some stuff hi um we had a meme image for the end of the show it's been our thing this season uh this week's was a little too hot for tv so we're gonna put this week's image in your hands um i'm gonna give you a frame and you put whatever you want on here uh there you go and here's my face knowing this is a bad idea Kind of wondered what they were talking about there as far as it was too hot for the TV. Very curious. It's a mistake. It's a mistake. It's and yeah, mistake. that was definitely a mistake. I don't know if I want to see half of what they're going to have there. So, kind of a real quick run through of everything there. Um, there are a few other things just want to touch base on. So, another news today, we also, thanks, George. So in other news today, we also actually got the um, updated launcher that came out. It's the 2.0 version. It is available to both, it looks like, Evocati and uh, Wave 1 backers. I'll go ahead and bring it up here and let you see it real quick. That way you can actually kind of get an idea of what we've got. So it definitely looks quite a bit better. Um, the main thing with it, of course, is one of the big things. They do not want you to actually run it. At the same time you're running the old launcher, there's been some issues with that that might cause some problems. So you definitely want to take a look at that whenever you're doing it. Let me clear myself out here real quick. So it looks a lot better. Of course, you can download it, you can install it, you can launch the game from it. It does have a, the community tab, kind of a learn to play Star Citizen tab, some of the con links, got of course patch notes. A lot of room up here for the possibility of additional games, so I would say most likely whenever Squadron 42 does release that it's going to be here as well. So it'll come in handy on that. Uh, I definitely think it's a vast improvement over the old one, and will get better over time. They do have an issue council and a uh, focus testing page that's out here as well. I'll bring those up real quick. 
it, so you can kind of see what they currently have available, what they're looking at to kind of do some testing and stuff with. They have a place where, of course, you can download it. Um, if you have access to it, of course, you'll be able to go into the issue council. They've already got quite a few different things here. I have experienced some of these. There's other ones I haven't experienced anything on. Um, of course, the launcher not scaling to full screen was one of them. Shortcuts take precedence. That one's a big one. We definitely want to help them as much as we can to try to get these taken care of. Some of the stuff I've not had any issues with, other people have, but it's good to at least let them know, hey, yes, you're having an issue. Hey, you're not having some issues with it. Now, the other thing, of course, is the roadmap. We did get some... Went wrong one. We did get the new roadmap. Uh, that is not the right... No, that is the right one. Um, the road roadmap update. So we, we know there are some definitely some additional changes that are incoming. The unique item recovery is a big one that I wish would have definitely made its way in. It still might later once they get more stuff going, but just buying something from the store and losing it and not being able to access it later is very annoying. You either have to do a full character reset, wait till a full wipe, something to be able to get your stuff back and it's not fun at all when that happens because you can't file insurance claims on it like you can with the ships um, the character customizer has been added to the confirmed or committed so we'll definitely be seeing that i can't wait to get into more details on that the reputation over hostility is going to be an amazing upgrade there being able to get actually reputation and also picking up with the different factions like the nine tails or xeno don't know how that's going to play out, but going in with the distribution centers and having the reputation with them and just being able to pick up certain missions, maybe get uh, access to rooms that normally are inaccessible to other players who don't have high reputation, definitely is going to be quite a bit of fun. The Diamond Crosshair is going to add a huge thing with the FPS gameplay. I've never been too big on like first-person shooters myself, but... Getting more and more into it, I definitely think, especially something like that, will help across the board there. And then we've got the Ample Hornet F7C Mark II. I did get one. I have not been able to do a lot with it other than doing a uh, jump to kind of take a tour around it real quick. Not paying attention that I was actually still moving, got out of it, and I stayed. The ship took off and have not been able to get back to it yet. So we'll look at that later. Um, but this kind of gives you a, a quick run through of everything. And I'll catch you in the next one. Have a good one.